Hey, traders. This is Blake. Welcome back to the Daily Roundup. So, as I told you guys the last couple of days, I felt that there was some um, some dollar, uh, I've heard that there was some dollar selling coming in the market uh, for the, um, for the um, end of month and end of quarter. And, it, um, and, I, and I'm like, you know, the dollar has been holding up pretty well. I was kind of bracing for maybe, maybe a little quick burst counter trend. Um, and I was telling, you know, people in our chat room, you know, if the, if the, um, uh, you know, Euro could get back towards 119, I'd be a seller. Obviously that didn't happen. We just seen continued dollar strength and, um, which is fine. I'm long the dollar. I'm not going to complain about it. The problem is, is I, I, I was hoping we would get a little bit of a pullback into, you know, the data coming this week. Now, um, Stocks are still stronger. I mean, and, and you know, the S and P is at forty three hundred. The Nasdaq's off a little bit today, but the Dow's at the highs of the session. So it's hard for me to get too terribly excited at this point. But I, I, I do want to say that the dollar is holding up relatively well. Um, if you guys don't know who uh, North Hero FX is, um, this is a guy I used to trade with some of the guys that I uh, traded with for several years. He made a point on Twitter, and I, I want to reiterate his point, and I've seen this over the last 12 months. We've talked about it with uh, Gellos and the guys that I used to trade with. The the order, the order, flows that you get for end of month, end of quarter aren't as big as they used to be. It used to be just super explosive. You guys might have remembered from like a year or two ago. It'd be end of month, end of quarter, and you could get a 100-pip move. But now they're kind of thinning those. Like if, if, if there's a big end of month, buy order for dollars, let's say, you might see it spread out over the course of a couple of days now. Um, and that's why you're getting some of the fixes like the week before, or a couple of days before you're getting some volatility there because they're just trying to, they're, they're trying to make it um, less, they're more stealthy, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, why wouldn't you? Um, so, but if, if there's lingering flows, like let's say, Let's say I have, uh, you know, 10 yards of a currency to buy, which is a lot, you know, um, and I've got, I've got to try to piecemeal that over the course of a couple of days. And then let's say at the end of the couple of days, I still have a big chunk of it left. That means the day like today, you know, the end of the month, end of the quarter, I'm going to have to push, um, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to uh, push the remainder of that flow through. Right. So, you know, that that's just, and that's what creates those imbalances. Um, we already knew that the dollar selling would have been, was fairly minor, but what makes that really interesting is the dollar still holding up so well. And so, um, you know, currently I don't know what to do because I don't want to add to my dollar longs, you know? Um, I mean, you know, look, the Aussie is, you know, it's, it's dropped. I'm up 65 pips from where I, you know, entered and I don't necessarily want to just start selling more here, knowing that we have big data coming up, but I don't, I don't, necessarily think I want to book any more profits either because I took some off the table yesterday when I was up about 50 some odd pips, you know, for example, and I'm, you know, along the dollar Canadian and, and we're, we're up, you know, near this resistance. I do want to book a little bit here, but at the same time, it's like, do, don't I want to keep a little bit of exposure going into the jobs report? Because once again, if the jobs report is a beat, these dollar pairs are going to rip. So, um, that's, that, that's my initial gut instinct with, with, um, with what I'm doing right now. One of the other things I want to, I want to mention to you guys that I thought was rather interesting. You guys know that stocks are up, obviously the S and P's at the 4,300 level. And, uh, like I mentioned, even though the NASDAQ's pulling back just a little bit, you got, uh, the Dow 
is up at you know near its trend highs. What I find really interesting is the dollar Mexican peso is trying to break out to the upside. It broke uh, 1990. So <laughs> Alex, a new haircut. Now it really seems like you are 25. Don't I look younger with a haircut? It's amazing. Like, like really, like, you know, I, it, it's amazing how much it takes off of, uh, you know, your look, doesn't it? It's amazing. Uh, and, and, and says gold and silver holding up well too, considering it is, I, I have to agree, gold and silver, actually silver is a lot higher than I thought it'd be, but to silver's for sil to you know for silver silver's actually held up a little bit better but we probably are doing this this is this is way i would look at silver right now gold you probably do the same maybe so i i, I do think silver's holding up better and you're right silver and gold are holding up um, the question is going to be it, it, the still lingering question that I have is that, um, is, uh, you know, the dollar is holding up so well right now. What happens, what happens if stocks, you know, start to struggle? The Dow is being the Dow. Remember that's only 30 stocks. You know, S&P 500 is 500 stocks and we're just kind of struggling here at 4,300. The NASDAQ 100, you know, is, come, is, is starting to stall, which is your leadership really in a bullish market. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, you know what it is really is uh, if you didn't buy the dollar earlier this week, right? If you're if we if you didn't buy the dollar early, earlier this week, I don't know if it makes sense to buy the dollar right now, because let's go over to the dollar index. Okay, the dollar index is at you know this resistance. There is, I think, a, a chance, and I'm I'm just going to redraw this really quick, and then I'm going to put it back. But I think there's a chance. We're, we're going to form like a wedge, something that looks like this or maybe like this. This is a four hour chart. So I think it's going to look something like that going into um, going into non-farm payroll. What happens after that? It's all due. It's all up to Friday. I mean, it's and and. I just want you guys to know I'm doing a trader battle with um, with um, um, Aspen Trading, Dave, right, for non-farm payroll. So I won't be on the uh, face webinar on Monday or on Friday um, for non-farm payroll. I'll be on the trader battle. But the, the plan is really simple. Whether you decide to listen to me or you just stay with face and listen there. The plan is really simple. A strong number, you have to buy dollars. A weak number, you sell dollars. And if you're trading stocks, a strong number, you short stocks. A weak number, you buy stocks. It's pretty simple. You know, the, the, the trade selection for me is gonna be really all commodity currencies. You know, weak data, buy the Aussie. The Aussie probably has a lot of lot lot to bounce back, you know. I mean, you know, I know we're 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 trying to make this flag pattern. I still think it's going down. But you know, we could end up doing something like this on strong data. Like um, just... I'm sorry, on weak data. That's what I meant to say. If we have weak data stocks bounce back the aussie ends up doing something like you know ends up being something like that right but like i said i i, I actually think the data is going to surprise us to the upside 
that happens, then the Aussies should be trading down here. And this is ultimately where I think we're going. But again, it's a, it's a crapshoot. Lorraine says, I look 33. Yeah, I love you, Lorraine. I don't feel 33. <laughs> um, so anyway. What else do I want to cover? You know what? Dollar yen's back at 111. So um, go to dollar yen. So dollar yen's back at 111, right? This is resistance, and you know, I I, I still think that we can make it up to here, which is 111. It was 111.25 we were looking at, so maybe a little bit higher. So if you guys missed selling some of those like um, uh, yen trades, right? You missed selling uh, selling some of those yen trades. I think you might be able to get an opportunity to short them a little higher here. So if you look at like the Canadian yen, here's the Euro yen. I, I actually think that these are you know, forming the Euro yen might be something like this, right? Sell, selling the strength here. L look at these, look at these yen pairs and look, uh, look to sell in a strength. I think that's, that's the, uh, that's the key. Aussie yen. I think that's how you play it personally. Something like that, right? This, this may you know be off, but I think you 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 play these yen pairs short. What I would be thinking is you uh, you let a little bit of let yen weakness come in with stocks as strong as they are. Let the dollar as soon as the dollar yen hits like the one. One eleven, like twenty or thirty level, like up here. So as soon as the dollar yen does this, matter of fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna set an alarm for like right around here. Watch this. See this. Watch this. Hold on. Twenty-eight. Okay. Watch these numbers right here. Stand by. I'm gonna make an adjustment for you guys because I want you guys to be. Oh shoot! I did the wrong thing here. I want you guys to be notified when that happens too. So. Ready? Watch. Watch. <laughs> okay. So now you're going to be notified at 111.25, which will be just ahead of this 127% extension, and 111.39, which will be just ahead of this channel. So now if you have, you know, if you have the app on your phone on, Okay, so if you have the app on your phone, go over to where it says settings, right? And then you can go to settings, uh, wait, not general setting, notifications, where's the 
So settings down the bottom, it says notifications. And then make sure, make sure that you have the support and resistance level, uh, um, support, and re support and resistance breach. Make sure you have it to your cell phone, right? So this way, whenever those levels are hit, you're notified that they, that they hit. Um, so I just adjust because when the dollar yen reaches those levels up here, if, if we do not when, if we do, then that should trigger you. Hey, maybe I should go short the Euro yen or Aussie yen or whatever other yen pair you're trading. Okay. It makes sense. Good. Um, Gorkum says new normal is frustrating to follow. I know it is. So are masks, mask mandates. That's frustrating. Gorkum said, this is an interesting chart. This is a correlation between overnight um, RRP and gold price. Maybe gold could drop more. Wow. That is an interesting chart. Thanks, Gorkum. I appreciate that. And so does everybody else here. Um, yeah, and, and you know what? It's interesting. I think that with the go with gold rallying, usually the yen rallies with gold and they've got an exact opposite relationship at the moment, which I find very interesting. All right, so um, guys, I'm going to talk to you later. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you all so much for your continued support. Remember, we're about a week away from getting some pretty good news on what's happening with Forex Analytics. Um, pretty exciting stuff. I think you guys are gonna be really happy, especially those of you guys that are in the chat rooms and stuff. I think you're gonna find it really beneficial. But even those of you that um, are just, you know, just on the, on the light version, I think you're gonna be really um, quite happy with um, some things that are happening in the coming weeks. So anyway, thank you all for your support. Uh, I will see you laters. Bye-bye.